Today we're going to talk about the book, The Declaration. The Declaration is written by Gemma Malley, and it's a science fiction book. So if you're looking for the genre in the library, you can go to science fiction. Today, right now, in the year 2012, we have everything that we need to survive. We have water. We have plenty of food. We have plenty of resources. But, unfortunately, because there's so many people in this world, and so many more people being born, we started to use up all of our resources. And all of that plenty that we had came with a price. Unfortunately, in our future, our world was in a state of destitution. Does anybody know what destitution means? Yes? Does it mean like poor? It means poor, it means depleted, it means destroyed. You know, like poverty? Like poverty, poverty absolutely. So we were in a state of destitution. And our government and some of the scientists came together and said, what can we do? How can we make this better? And they talked about it and talked about it. And 100 years into our future, all of a sudden, they came up with the Declaration. They wrote a declaration, and they asked everybody that lived in the world to sign this declaration. And if they signed that declaration, they received this pill. This is called the longevity pill. And if you take the longevity pill, you'll live forever. You'll be perfect forever and ever and never die. But you have to sign the declaration. So what's the catch? Do you know what the declaration tells you? You can't have any children. You can get married, but you can't have any children. We cannot put any more children into this world to take up the resources that we have depleted. So sign the declaration, get longevity, and you can live forever. Hmm. However, on 11 January 2140, again, 100 years into the future, my name is Anna. My name is Anna, and I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't exist, but I do. It's not my fault I'm here. I didn't ask to be born. But that doesn't make it any better that I was. They caught me early, which bodes well. That's what Mrs. Pinson says anyway. She's the lady that runs Grange Hall. We call her house matron. Grange Hall is where I live, where people like me are brought up to be useful. The best of a bad situation, Mrs. Pinson says. I don't have another name, not like Mrs. Pinson does. Mrs. Pinson's name is Margaret Pinson. Some people call her Margaret, most people call her Mrs. Pinsent, and we call her House Matron. Lately, I've called her Mrs. Pinsent too, but not to her face. I'm not stupid. Legal people generally have two names, sometimes more. Not me, though. I'm just Anna. People like me don't need another name, Mrs. Pinsent says. One is quite enough. Actually, she doesn't even like the name Anna. She told me she tried to change it when I first came here. But I was an obstinate child, she says, and I wouldn't answer to anything else. So in the end, she gave up. I'm pleased. I like the name Anna, even though my parents gave it to me. I hate my parents. They broke the declaration and didn't care about anybody else but themselves. They're in prison now, and I don't know where. None of us knows anything about our parents anymore, which is fine by me. I would have nothing to say to them anyway. None of the girls or boys here has more than one name. That's one thing that makes us different, Mrs. Pinson says. Not the most important thing, of course. Having a name is just a detail. Sometimes I long for a second name, even a horrible one. I wouldn't care what it was. One time, I even asked Mrs. Pinson Anna Pinsent, to have her name after mine. That made her really mad, and she hit me hard across the head, and she took me off of hot meals for a whole week. Mrs. Larson, 
Our sewing instructor explained later that it had been an insult to even suggest that someone like me could have Mrs. Pinson's name as if I could be related to her. Actually, I do sort of have another name, but it's a pre-name, not a sur after name. And everyone here has got the same one, so it doesn't really feel like a name. On the list that Mrs. Pinson carries around with her, I'm down as surplus Anna. But really, it's more of a description than a name. We're all surpluses at Greenchall. Surpluses to requirements, surpluses to capacity. That was Anna. She's a surplus because her parents broke the declaration. And now she's learning how to live in Grange Hall. What happens in the declaration is somebody named Peter comes to Grange Hall and he's got something to tell Anna. And it's about her parents. And Anna and Peter will spend the entire book trying to find that truth about her parents. And guys, and I'm speaking to the boys in the room, this is not just about cute little Anna. This is about life-threatening adventures that they have to go through to find the truth. This isn't just some book about a little girl being in a hall. It's about how they're going to find the truth. So, if you like mysteries, if you like sci-fi books, The Declaration by Gemma Malley, is definitely something that you want to read. Now, if you do get interested and really into the Declaration, guess what? There's more. Gemma has also written The Resistance, The Returners, and The Legacy. And I'm telling you, once I read the Declaration, I had to finish all of the books because they were that good. She recently came up with The Killables, and I haven't read that yet, but I do have that on my to-read list. But if you're still not sure, if you're not sold by what I've said, if you've read game, uh, books like The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins, if you've read The Maze Runner by James Dashner, or even The Giver by Lois Lowry, you're going to like the Declaration.